What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, here with a mate of mine, Logan's brand new toy. He got uh, one of his dream cars, which is a bit of a JDM cult legend. It's a Mitsubishi Legnum wagon. And uh, yeah, he's not long picked it up and he's just invited me out for a ride in it. So yeah, mate. Hey, young. So how'd you come across this one? Um, I saw it on Marketplace when I was looking for a replacement for our Mark V GTI we had. Oh yeah. Um, I was looking to get another wagon because I let go of my Ninja Subi, didn't my Subi wagon, yeah, which was a bit of a, a cut to the heart. Um, when the gearbox decided to go for a bit of a beer, and you even had a Falcon for a bit as well. I did, didn't yeah, I, I did. But uh, the dark side, the Falcon gave me more problems than anything I've ever owned, and they can do that. Yeah, it was a bit of a love hate with it, but looking at another sort of wagon for the family side of things, um, come across the Legnum on Marketplace uh, for really good price and I've been in Australia since 2008 and I haven't seen one um, oh, I've seen one which a guy in um, around the Midnight Society used to have I think um, Kane Oral had one mm. had a really nice silver one but that's the only one I've, I've seen since I've been in Australia just around or for sale just around like I haven't never seen them pop up or marketplace yeah or anything this was the first one I saw pop up and I had to double check the ads to make sure that it wasn't actually a Magna Wagon yeah <laughs> which everyone over here calls them yeah um, but no, it was genuine, genuine Legnum. Yeah, right, because i got to admit, even the last time I would have seen one would have been when I was living in Brisbane at least, yeah. I reckon, seven years ago. It was the last time I probably saw it. Yeah, well, they seem to be pretty big over there on the um, on the VR4 Oz page. Uh, Brisbane seems to be one of the main sort of highlights I see with parts for sale and yeah, yeah. Um, most Legnum-oriented questions all seem to be either Brisbane or New Zealand. Yeah, right. Because, I mean, even in Perth in general, it's not a massive JDM scene. Like, it's mostly your Australian variants. Yeah. We get it, obviously, but by comparison to East Coast, I'd say it's quite small. Yeah. So, it's always good to see it when it does pop up, to be honest. And the guys that are here, or the examples that are here, are pretty damn good. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you get your, your Skylines and your Evos and all your Subarus, but when you really knuckle down and you look for an actual JDM off the boat straight from Japan, it, they're either hidden away or you just you really see most genuine JDM cars on the road. Yeah. But you know, there's reasons behind it. You know, there's a lot of money involved and wanting to keep it tucked away from getting damaged and whatnot. And yeah. you know, here I am daily driving and I like them as a family car. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you were saying it came across from Japan in two thousand eight? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. With the import um, stickers on the side of it, I'd I'd assume so. And um, with the one eighty dash cluster as well. So what is the 180 dash cluster? Is that just the, the speed itself or? Yeah, that's that's what it tops out with and I'm tops out at, but I'm pretty sure that's just what the Japanese, you know, how most of them are. Because of the a gentleman's agreement. Yeah, the agreement where everyone says it makes this much power, but let's be honest. Yeah, they did a, such a basic tune, it was all yeah. pretty much BS anyway. So. But yeah, I mean, for legal reasons, I'll say it does 180, but it most definitely goes. It gets to 100 or yeah, 110 here 110, in WA yeah. pretty, pretty well. You know, no further than that, really. You don't need that. Yeah. So, uh, what's done to it so far? Like you said, it's it's obviously pretty a stock example, but like, what is done to it so far, and what's your plans? Um. Well, the way I picked it up with, I picked it up with a blow off valve, uh, can in, uh, intake, um, the exhaust, um, the gauges, and that seems to be all I've come across so far. Yeah. And the sub. Oh yeah. Move, but I mean, the amp size is enough to power Skynet. <laughs> it's massive. It takes up the whole boot floor pan. It is so wide. Yeah, right. I discovered it um, the other That's day. That's probably showing the age of the when the mods went on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. So, what's your plans with it? Um, I'd like to tidy up the body a bit. Um, the paintwork. Um, unfortunately, this one here does have its its weakness at the legnum's cobs, which are the lower control arms. So, I mean, our 80Ks. I don't know if you can feel it now. You can feel it's a little bit. Yeah, I was looking at the steering wheel. Yeah, a little bit. So 80 to 100 k's, they like to shudder a fair bit. Yeah, but you sort of. So is that just down to the bushings, or the the arms themselves aren't strong? Um, having a look at it, it looks like the bushings. As you can see, it's just like sort of sandwiched out. Yeah. So the lower control arms go on these, and the ball joint. So I think most of the suspension components will be the first thing I look at doing to get rid of the shutter. Yeah, just get the drivability back. Um, and then after that, I'll probably just go with my usual, what I did with my last wagon, which is fuel pump. What, it boosts the hell out of it? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the forums alone, because like, they run seven from factory. Yep. Um, 
reading the forums, but I mean, like, you know how forums are, they're a bit like nice though. Yep. Um, but you can run these for about 15 pounds from the get go with a boost too, it'll take it. This one does for a hold of about five seconds and then it pops off the intake piping, but yep. it's capable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'll do the most of the, the housing components to sort of make it happy, so the fuel pump and um, the injectors seem to be pretty good alone. They yep. still seem to not max out as much, but I mean, from factory, they've then they made like 275 to all four. Horsepower, yeah. Yeah, horsepower to all four. Yep. Um, and the... Which is decent, especially for the error and the fact that it's all drive. Yeah. Extra power loss, you know, well, through the drivetrain. The dyno chart that I've got is the one from Mitsubishi when they dyno it. And like the linear of when the power comes on is like someone drew with a ruler. Yeah. It's just straight like that, the whole way up. Yep. Um, but just trying to do most of the components to just sort of make it a bit happier and healthier in a way so it takes it because you know it may be a family car but i'm not a boring dad no so. certainly not i've seen the way you drive sometimes <laughs> on the track it sounds so good eh the dose you get that blow off valve is so oversized like the size of it is just like huge Let's see what she's about oh full stop start That's I impressive, know. it just goes. That was impressive. <laughs> well, like next to no mods, the age of the car, the K's on the car, 250 odd thousand K's on it. That was genuinely impressive. Like I can tell once it got going, if it was a highway pull or something, it wouldn't have the power, but like as a round town and off the line, that's quick, man. So um, what were you saying that's sort of like, this shared obviously a lot of uh, comparable parts with Magnus or depending on if you're in the States with your Diamantes or whatever they call them over there. Yeah, towards Magnus, I'm not too sure. And um, Evos? The Evos, yes, they did. Yep. Um, a lot of Evo 6 variants bolt straight onto this. Yep. So like those lower control arms that I need, I can just go buy Evo 6 ones, which yep. makes it so much easier. So it's not the actual whole subframe assembly, you nah, can actually just nah. do the arms? Towards being very, very similar, I'm not too sure exactly what the Evo was compared to this. Um, but I know that they do share a lot of similarities from, you know, the 50-50 um, displacement. Yep. This being all-time four drive, you know, the whole 50-50. There's no 60-40 like Subaru. Yep. Sorry, Subaru. But, so that's when the Evo came along and they sort of shortened everything and sharpened everything. And this is just, I guess you could call the Evo's dad. In yeah. A way. It is in this a way. This is what the Evo sort of learned off, in my opinion, I reckon. Yep. Because where is this in terms of the Evo 3s and all the rest of it, or it's just the way the Evo's headed? Um, this being a 97, I'm not too familiar with the timeline of the years of Evos, but I mean, if an Evo 6 would probably be the same year, so a 97, yep. if that. Um, to say that it bolts straight on, then yeah, I'd say they did them all at the same time, and I think this is sort of what Subaru did in their way, with if you want a boy toy, but you have a family, they made a wagon variant, like yep. what they had with the GF8 or um, the yep. rest of the wagons. Or um, even the way they went with the Liberties and all that yeah, kind of stuff, they had the different that's variations what I mean. on a similar place. So, so yeah, you know, the Liberties was like the luxury take on it when, you know, you, you grew up from being a boy to a man, but you didn't want to give up being a boy. Uh, yeah. That's sort of what you lent towards. And I think that's what Mr. Bishy's aim was with this car, yep. was, you know, you got a family, but you're not boring. You know, here's a twin turbo V6 wagon. Until Mitsubishi themselves went boring. Yeah, and then uh, they went through a weird period again, like everyone does. You know, they try new things, and sometimes new things just don't rock the party. But for you know a 22 plus year old car, like it's pretty. It's not bad for what it is. For what you get out of it. Yep. It's you can see why they did what they did, and probably why they didn't continue on at, at the same time as well. Yeah. So what um, engines in this one? It's a V6, obviously. But yeah, what is it? Two point five V6 twin turbo. Yep. Um, I believe it shares the same variants as uh, the GTO as well, the three thousand. I think the GTO was a three or three, three and a half liter. Yeah, three liter. Yeah, but I think most of the sort of shape and components yeah, were sure. like same, same, but different. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's two point five. Um, absolutely horrible in fuel, but you know I didn't buy it for fuel. Yep. 
and a touch up on uh, a tune and once you get things yeah, sorted, tell me anyway. Test so. it, even it all out. And you were saying it actually is talking about the GTO. You said it had the GTO's brakes on it. It's, yeah, it's on this one does, yeah. Yep. Um, just a bit bigger as well, chunkier pads. Um, the standard ones alone are a bit, a bit thin. I mean, yep. I don't really want to compare again, but... Do you know if it's gone to like a single piston rear or a twin piston No, or I, wouldn't, like I wouldn't have a clue. Yep. I haven't really dug too far into the brakes, which I probably should, because you kind of need brakes. You do, if you're going to go fast. It stops. Eventually. Yeah. <laughs> the vibration just makes it so much more of an experience, doesn't it? It's like that will obviously get me. It's like you're going to space. <laughs> yeah, we're, I'm pretty sure we weren't going to take off if we didn't pull up for that speed bump.